There are two types of load balancer in Oracle's Gen2 Cloud. What are these? When to use which one? And how to create them in Cloud Console? I'll cover all this in this episode. Welcome to part four of five part video series, Networking in Oracle's Gen2 Cloud with me, Atul Kumar from team K20 Academy. And in this video, we are going to cover basic concepts about load balancers in Oracle Cloud that's used in deploying highly available application. I'll also show you how to configure them in Oracle's Cloud Dashboard, covering creating a load balancer, adding the backend servers, creating HTTP listener, and testing this connection from the internet. But before that, if you have not watched previous video or completed tasks given in that video like creating virtual cloud network, subnet, or security list, then I highly recommend you to pause this video and watch the previous video because the concepts like virtual cloud network, subnet, or security list are also used in load balancer. But first, let's see what is load balancer. So the load balancer is a logical component that distribute the traffic from client onto the multiple backend servers. So if you look at this diagram on right hand side, you have multiple web servers or application servers for high availability and users want to access these backend servers running web server or application server, then load balancer will accept the traffic and forward the request to the backend servers and then receive the response back from the backend servers and forward it back to the client. And if you look at high availability deployment of this application, which is deployed across two availability domain within an region, so the load balancer is going to distribute the traffic coming from either on-premise or from internet onto these two backend servers. Now, there are two types of load balancers. One is public load balancer, and second is private load balancer. So let's look at what these two different type of load balancers and properties or characteristics of these two load balancers. So first, public load balancer. Public load balancer, as name suggests, is exposed to the internet or for public. So it's primarily used when traffic originate from your public internet. So when you define the public load balancer that we are going to see in a minute by connecting to the Oracle Cloud Console, this public load balancer requires two subnets and these two subnets are required for high availability. Now, another requirement is that these two subnets must be in different availability domain. So one subnet will act as a primary load balancer and another subnet will automatically become a secondary load balancer. Now, on which load balancer with this primary will go and which load balancer this secondary will go, you can't dictate that it's Oracle which will dictate where this load balancers go. And the failover is also automatic. So you don't have to worry about the failover between primary and standby. When you get the load balancer, that then you are going to get a public IP and public IP will be the one that is attached to the primary load balancer. And that's the IP address that your client or users are going to use. Now, another one is private load balancer and private load balancer is typically used when traffic is originating within the VCN when traffic is not coming from internet. So one of the example could be that your load balance or you have a public load balancer, then you have two web servers. After these two web servers, you have another load balancer for internal traffic forwarding request to the application server. So public load balancer, then request going to the two web servers. And from these two web servers, then it's going to the private load balancer. And then from this private load balancer, then going to the two application servers. Now, unlike public load balancer, private load balancer only requires one subnet. That means it's not highly available across availability domain. There's an inbuilt high availability, but that's within availability domain. So if your availability domain goes down in which you've deployed the private load balancer, you will lose this private load balancer. So if you want highly available private load balancer, you need to deploy two load balancers with a similar configuration as private load balancers and then configure or use a DNS within OCI or external DNS to distribute this traffic to these internal load balancers. So just to do a quick recap about these load balancers before we go and connect 
to the Oracle Cloud and create these load balancers. Load balancer is nothing but it takes incoming request and distribute it to the backend servers, be it application server or web server. There are two types of load balancers, public load balancer and private load balancer. Public load balancer is highly available across availability domain, which means you need two subnets deployed across availability domain. Whereas private load balancer is highly available within availability domain, but if you want to make them highly available across availability domain, then you deploy two private load balancers within two different availability domain and then use DNS as a round robin for them. Now let's connect to the cloud and create this load balancer so you understand it, including how to configure or how to forward that request to the backend servers. So I'm on the OCI console and from this hamburger menu on top left, you go to networking and click on load balancers. And this is a screen for from where you go and create load balancer. Simply create load balancer, but there's more than just simply by clicking one button, which is create load balancer. So let's look at the entire process of creating this load balancer. What are the high level steps to create this load balancer. So this is the guide that explains on a high level all the points that you need to do or task you need to perform in order to create the load balancer. This is also one of the activity guides that we cover in our Oracle Cloud Architect Certification 100932 training program. And I've covered everything about this certification exam 100932 in my free masterclass that you can attend by registering to ketoneacademy.com forward slash OCI02. So if you are not yet Oracle certified cloud architect, then have a look at about this certification program. So what you do, first task is you create a virtual cloud network in which you want to create the load balancer. This particular VCN task we've already covered or done it in previous video. Then you create two compute instances and these are maybe a Linux machine or Windows machine, whatever operating system you want to pick on which your applications are running or web servers are running. So you will have create two and these two servers will be your backend servers that you're going to use in load balancer. Then you're going to create two subnets in two different availability domains. And these two subnets will host your load balancer. One acting as primary and second acting as standby. Then you will go onto that button I showed you earlier and create the load balancer. So when you're creating the load balancer with that, you will also create a backend set. Again, I'll show you in a minute by doing this. In this backend set, then you're going to create these two backend servers that you created earlier in step four. Once you've created the load balancer, then you'll go and create a listener. So here in this load balancer, you've created a IP or you received a public IP. But with this public IP, you're going to add a listener or a port number on which this load balancer is going to listen. For example, port number 80 or 443. And then now once you've created the listener, then you update the security list on the load balancer so that traffic from internet is allowed to this listener port, which is 80 or 443. And then finally, you test your load balancer. So let's go back to the console again. If you see here, so you go and click on this create load balancer button. You specify the name of the load balancer. This is the shape. So shape is how much traffic is allowed to go from this load balancer. So you have 100 Mbps, 400 Mbps, 8000 Mbps. So appropriately pick appropriate shape of this load balancer. And this is where you define whether you want public load balancer or private load balancer. We are defining the public load balancer. So we'll pick up or select the public load balancer. Now you pick your appropriate virtual cloud network in which you want to create this load balancer. Then this is where you will select the subnet. As I said, you will need two subnets. So first let's assume I'll pick up this subnet, which is Elbas subnet 81 that I've created already. Then you need to pick the second subnet. Now the second subnet you can only create in availability domain two because you've already created one in availability domain one. So we'll pick up the second subnet then this is the listener, which means when a load balance is configured, it is going to listen for client request on this particular port number. So you can use either port 80 or 443. I'm going to use 80 or leave it 80, but you can also create 
for SSL. Again, in our training program, we have both the options to configure or configure this load balancer on 443 as well. But when you're doing this 443, you will have to import the SSL certificates on this load balancer. And these certificates can be self-signed certificates or issued by the public signing authority. So I'll skip this for now. I'll just configure it to listen on port number 80. Now this is where you define the backend set. So first is when load balancer is going to forward request to the backend servers, what will be the load distribution policy? Should it be round robin, one at a time, one second, third, fourth, or it could be least connection or IP hash. Now, if you're not sure about what these mean and would like to understand about these, then leave a comment and I'll be glad to help you. Then this is where you're defining the backend servers. So I'll not define them right now, delete it, and we'll add this backend servers separately. And then just click on create. So when you hit submit, you will get this load balancer configured. So this is the load balancer that I received. Now, once you see this load balancer, you go to this backend set and click on this backend set. And once you are in the backend set, you will see this backend. So this is where you'll go and add your backend servers. These are the servers on which your application is running. So I've already added this one backend servers. Let me show you how to add one more backend server. So I'll click on edit backends. So this is our already added. So you will need the instance OCID for this compute on which your application is running. So you identify the OCID, add the port number and hit submit. Now let's go and look at where to find this OCID. So you go to again compute here, click on instances and under the machine for which you want to find the OCID, just click on show. This is the OCID for this or on this machine, this is the OCID. So this is a number which is Oracle Cloud Identifier. You simply copy and put it for go and paste it on the backend sets. Now, Once you've configured the load balancer, once you've created the backend servers, we'll go back to the load balancer again. And we need to now add a listener to this load balancer. So this public load balancer in that I need to add a listener, which is the port number. When I was creating the load balancer, I already created a listener 80. I can create one more listener, which means it's going to have listen on two port numbers. So one is 80 and let's add one more, which is 443. So we'll say SSL listener. And this time you po select the port 443 by using SSL and say yes. And we need to attach the backend set to this. So I've already created the backend set on that and say click create. It will submit a work request, which means it's going to do this job behind the scene and will create or you will see another listener here soon. Now, when users are going to make a connection, they will use this IP. Now, usually end users don't use IP, they use a name. So you will map this IP in your DNS. So you define a name and then map that name to this IP. For testing purpose, we'll simply now go and see if we can connect or I can tell it to this port number 80 or 443. I'll just refresh this load balancer and now I see these two listeners 80 and 443. So the final task is to see this port number that's public IP. Is it open for port number 443 or 80? So I'm on a command prompt and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say telnet and then the IP address. Let's try to see what happens if I give a port which is not listening and you will get connecting which means it's unable to connect to this port number which is 4213 and it's expected because we have not defined port number because nothing is listening on port number 213. Now let's do the same thing but you do it for port number 80 and you'll see that connection will go straight in. So you see it's so this shows now that port number 80 is open and listening and you request if your backend servers are all working you will get a page. So let's do a quick recap on what we covered so far. So we looked at load balancer, which is nothing but a component that distribute traffic to the backend servers. There are two type of load balancers, public load balancer and private load balancer. So now it's your turn to perform these tasks on cloud. Remember, you learn better when you perform these tasks. So assumption is that you've already created a virtual cloud network, subnet, security list, as I covered in previous video. If you have not looked it, watch it at ketoneacademy.com forward slash 1009315.
Once you have done that exercise, then you create two machines for your app server. Assume both are running on port number 8000. So these will be your created as your backend or origin servers. And we are going to add them as a part of your backend set. Then task number two, you create a public load balancer. Then task three, add these backend servers that you created in the first step to these backend sets. Then task four, create a HTTP listener for your load balancer. Then task five is you allow the load balancer listener port via the security list for connections from the internet. And final task is test this connection that you can tell net to this port number that's listening for listener. Well, that's it for today. And in the next and final video of this series, I'll cover deploying a highly available Oracle eBusiness Suite environment, including disaster recovery across region. But before you go, here's a little quiz for you. I want you to answer this question in comment section. And I'm going to explain this in my next video. So the question is, when deploying a highly available internet facing two tier web application on Oracle Cloud infrastructure, which design option would you use? Option one, deploy all web servers into one availability domain and behind a public load balancer and deploy two single node OCI database system in same availability domain with data guard enable. Now, if you followed this series, you probably would understand what is the availability domain, what is a public load balancer, and you'll also have a fair understanding of OCI database system. Then option two you have is deploy all web servers into multiple availability domain and behind a public load balancer and deploy two single node OCI databases system across two availability domain with data guard enabled. Option three, deploy all web servers into multiple availability domain and behind a private load balancer and deploy two single node OCI database system across two availability domain with data guard enabled. And option four is deploy all web servers into single availability domain and deploy a single node OCI database system into a different domain. So this is the kind of questions that you would expect in Oracle Cloud Architect Certification 100932. So, Tell me what you think the answer might be and I'll discuss this in my next and final video in this five part video series where I'll be covering deploying a highly available Oracle eBusiness Suite R12 environment including disaster recovery across region. Next video is going to be useful even if you're not an eBusiness Suite consultant. You can use the same logic for deploying PeopleSoft, JD Edward or any other third party application on Oracle Cloud. So thanks for watching this video and if you like this, don't forget to share it with your colleagues and also leave a comment with your feedback on what more topics you want to hear from me. I'll see you soon in next video.